and welcome back to my channel so as you can see I've got my Mickey is on and my spirit jersey so today is another Disney related video so this video is all about booking Disneyland Paris specifically and Disney like yeah Disney trips in general um so obviously I've been to Disney and Paris quite a lot I've been six times as an adult and I've been a number of times as a child um two of those times as an adult were as solo trips um so yeah I feel I kind of know quite a lot about it um going through the process myself and booking it so um and then obviously a couple were booked like through other people or with other people so it wasn't just me um but yeah I feel I know quite a lot about it and I just wanted to share with you guys um I did one of these kind of videos a little while ago I think now but I just kind of want to do an updated version to show or tell you guys some new things what might have come about um and yeah just to update the video kind of thing so obviously I'm gonna base it more on Disneyland Paris but they kind of all apply to most of the Disney parks anyway um so let's get started so for Disneyland Paris it is um there are a number of different ways you can get to Disneyland Paris before you've even like decided that you're going like getting to Disneyland Paris is so easy from many different parts of the UK so you can fly and you can drive and you can get a Eurostar that's it's so easy to get over to France um so I've flown once before I've got a ferry um before and i've also got the euro style before i've never done the tunnel straight to disneyland paris um i went on a school trip um to holland and then we did a day at disney at the end so that was another adult trip um and we did the tunnel then so i have done the tunnel um i just haven't gone directly to disneyland paris with that option um but it is an option for you and it's normally a cheaper one so flying obviously you can pick your respective airport which you are close to or one which you might be able to get to a lot easier so my closest airport is actually Luton it is 20 minute drive um to get there um but the only thing with that is me getting to Luton although it's 20 minute drive if I'm going on solo trips I don't drive so getting to that airport is actually quite hard for me because or it costs more because I'd have to get a taxi or an uber or the bus and stuff so it's a lot harder for me to actually get to Luton as I don't drive um so also for me it's, it is quite easy for me to get down to Gatwick and to Heathrow um especially now with fast trains and stuff Gat Gatwick is very easy compared to how it used to be Stansted also for me is um it's about an hour and a half drive from where I am um, which isn't too bad but like I say there is there is also a coach where you can get to, over to Stansted Airport I believe from where I am um, so yeah they are some options that I have obviously you pick the respective airport you um, use or prefer um, when you're flying you want to try and get into Paris Charles de Gaulle Airport um, just because it is the one which is closer to Disney and that is the one where you can get the Magical Express from if you choose that option um, or the Magical Shuttle um, but you can go to Orly or Lay or, Lay or something I think some airports don't go to Charles de Gaulle uh, others do so I know for me Gatwick and L Luton go to Charles de Gaulle um, whereas I think Heathrow and Stans do go to Orly or Orlay um, which obviously would just take me a little bit longer to get over to Disney so flying is definitely an option you can pick up flights quite cheap if you're someone who can go at flexible dates i would definitely say booking everything separate does have its advantages because you can find a cheap flight um there's often flights on easyjet which are like 20 pound each way um as long as you're flexible with those dates you don't have the restrictions that you can only go here to here that's when i'd recommend booking your package holidays so um like I said, flying's easy. Getting the ferry and the Euro Tunnel are um, very easy as well. Obviously, if you drive, um, I would say the ferry definitely takes a lot longer. If you get motion sickness and stuff, uh, I would recommend taking ones in the middle of the day more. Uh, when I went in December 19 on my SLP trip, we were on the ferry at stupid o'clock in the morning. I think it was like two, no, 
was that 3 a.m., 4 a.m., something like that, we were on the ferry going to Disney. That wasn't too bad because it was pitch black outside. You couldn't see the sea. You couldn't see how rough it was. And it wasn't that bad. But when we came home, we got back on the ferry. I think we were on the ferry around 4 p.m., 5 p.m. And, and it was so rocky. Like, in the restaurant, all of, like, the glass bottles in the cabinet, like, came out. Um, they smashed on the floor. Um, they closed... Like they put barriers around all of the alcohol in the duty free shop as well. They weren't letting people with them. They were literally just rattling. It was so, oh, it was horrible and loads of people were ill. Um, but that's obviously like an experience that I've had. And then when I've been on the other ones on the ferry, I've not been that bad. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It just depends. But the Euro Tunnel is definitely um, an option. It's also very quick. I believe it's only about half an hour, 40 minutes. Um, and you literally just drive on, sit in your car, sit there, chill, you go under the sea, then you turn up and you're in France. So it's not too bad. Um, yeah, it, it's another easy option. It's also normally um, a, like a fairly cheap option because um, obviously you can feel your car rough as well. Same with the ferry. You can put as much in your car as you want. Your kids have got their space and you don't have to worry about like airport security and stuff like that and take over packing or wanted to bring back loads of merch because obviously you've got your whole car um so yeah those are options and um, i often take the eurostar just because i find it a lot easier um so for me the eurostar is very easy i live a half an hour train ride into london so i get a train to london and get on the Euro start at London St Pancras, which is obviously the first stop or like it's the main station. Uh, so I get on there and I have done into Paris itself twice now and I've done a direct train to Disney once. Um, so direct train to Disney is really good. It takes you straight to the park, um, literally to the outside of the park, which is amazing. Uh, and but it's often there is only one train a day Le leaving from St Pancras it's at 10 14 I think and as it's a Disney service you have it's often sold out and you have to be there an hour and a half before at least um whereas like going directly to Paris you only have to be there an, um, a minimum of 45 minutes before um because it's obviously not as busy and yeah there's more trains for the direct into paris one so for my september trip i was meant to be getting on a train at i think it was around 7 30 or 8 8 30 maybe it was um so i know i can get into uh, london an hour before that so that was fine um but obviously that had to be cancelled it got changed because of um covid but that's fine i didn't it didn't matter too much to me so those options are going into paris is definitely easier because you can get more time in the parks but considering when you do that option you have to get from paris over to disney i use the rer which is like the their version of the underground like a metro system so in the center of paris it is very busy just like it is when you're going around the popular stops in london um it's also quite no, well known for pickpocket so keep yourself um aware of that um and it, yeah it's very easy there is a lady she did like a blog post about it because i looked it up when i'd planned to be able to do this um which i'll leave the link in the description to her blog post because it's a really good one it shows you photos it's a very detailed but simple way to understand how to do it um and yeah like i said i've done it twice now first time obviously i followed the instructions going because i didn't know what i was doing and then the second time i was like oh okay i remember what i need to do now so i wouldn't recommend doing that option and getting on the aria if you either have young children who are in push chairs or if you're taking so on the euro so you can take two cases so if you're taking two cases each it might be a little bit tricky because i said it's like the underground it can get very cramped especially well i say peak time but pretty much throughout the whole day it gets very cramped um so yeah i wouldn't recommend it with push chairs there's a lot of stairs and i only saw a couple of lifts um and there's a few escalators which are fine um, so this is definitely more and that is more of an option if you've got slightly older children maybe 10 and up um, or you're going on an adults only trip 
Um, you can also, obviously, you can get a like Uber or taxi and stuff, but that will cost you around 80 euros, which probably don't, you don't want to do at the start of your trip. Whereas the RER train is. 760 euros an adult each way so it obviously works out a, a lot cheaper um you if you get the like, direct train into disney on the euro star obviously you're straight into disney you also have the option to add the magical express on meaning that you um get given pretty much like your check-in pack on the train it's all got your name on it everything you get given these luggage tags to put on your bags um which then once you get off the train you take your bags up to the magical express desk which is on the top floor and you drop your bags off there and then they take them to your respective hotel this is for all disney uh, on-site hotels and the partner hotels as well which i think is a really good option especially if you're staying at a partner hotel um and obviously in your welcome like check-in pack thing what they give you you get your park tickets as well which is very good so that means you can go straight into the park you don't have to worry about going to your hotel and then when you get finished or you go back to your hotel later um now you get your magic pass and um, you just take that to the reception desk because they will just have to scan that to do your key for your room because that is all of your things now a bit like the magic band is over in the states um it's your key to your room it's got your meal plans on it it's your park entry and things like that so you get given that on the train as well which is really good uh so Eurostar, like i said is a very good option so once you've decided that you are at how you get in there you obviously want to decide what hotel to stay in obviously everyone wants to stay in the main disneyland hotel but it is very expensive it is gorgeous but it's a very expensive hotel even if you go on booking.com it's around like i think i looked it up it's around 500 pounds a night like and that's on booking.com now and that's just a standard room so the other hotels are gorgeous um so you've got Newport Bay, Sequoia Lodge, the new Marvel Hotel, which should be coming soon. It was meant to be open last year. Um, hopefully it should be open by the end of this year. And then Santa Fe and Cheyenne are all the on-site hotels. Um, so that Disney obviously star rate their hotels. So obviously the main hotel is a five-star hotel. But I definitely say it's a lot more like it. If you could give it more, you, you could. And Newport Bay, Sequoia Lodge and... The new Marvel Hotel are aimed at four star hotels, but I would definitely 100% say they are five star standard. Uh, like, it's just obviously the way Disney rank their hotels into how expensive and stuff they are, but they are all three of them are definitely top level hotels. You will not regret booking one of those hotels. It's a little bit further to walk, but literally, it's it takes you five ten minutes max to get to the village and then you're in the parks it it is not a long walk guys even from cheyenne and santa fe i believe cheyenne is a three star um one and then santa fe is a two star but they're definitely like i said they're they're not bad hotels they don't say oh it's only a two star hotel i'm not going to stay there it is still a lovely hotel all the facilities are amazing in the hotels so once you've figured out and obviously within your price range i've stayed at santa fe and sequoia lodge both amazing places to stay at and obviously i've looked around the cheyenne and i've looked around newport bay as well both of them are amazing obviously the marble hotel is not open yet um, but the concept art and stuff looks amazing for it um, so just pick one within your budget you can get them at good prices and yeah if you want and um, obviously if you aren't an annual pass holder you can obviously book a hotel just like a hotel package with your tickets which is obviously really good i would recommend either using the walt disney travel company which is the main disney travel company magic breaks which i think uh, run with tui um, and then I've also used a company called dlparisdirect.com and I've never had an issue with them. I used them when I did my solo trip in Feb 19. I didn't have any issues with them. They rang me when something was pr wrong. Um, they, yeah, it was just 
I clicked for the Magical Express, but it just didn't go through on the thing. They just rang me and they said, oh, it just hasn't gone through. Did you still want it? Um... So yeah, they rang me pretty much straight away, um, left a, like, a voice um, voicemail because I was in work and were like, just ring us back whenever you can. Um, so yeah, they were very helpful. On all three of those sites, you can book package holidays so you can get your travel and your hotel and park tickets included. This is a good option, like I said, if you want to, if you can only go certain days, because um, obviously it'll give you the only, the travels for those certain days and the prices um but like i said if you can be flexy with your dates and stuff you, like you can book your travel separately get it at a cheaper price if that's something you're looking for or splashing out on those more expensive prices or more expensive hotels more money to spend on a nicer hotel or more merch when you're in the parks each of the hotels does have a free shuttle though which pick up from the front entrance of the hotel so most of the time when you're walking you will come out of the back of the hotel if you want to get the shuttles you need to go outside the front main reception the other hotels the partner hotels they're disney associated hotels and um, they each have a disney shop inside the like lobby like reception area and um, these are more like budget hotels they're obviously a lot more basic and um, standard kind of hotel rooms like you get over here or just generally and um, i've stayed at b and b and explorers now and i recommend both of them they are both lovely and um, i tend to go for b and b when i am trying to book trips because it's often a little bit cheaper and you get breakfast included in all of the room prices at b and b because it's better than breakfast um, when I stayed at Explorers, they had a thing on to get free breakfast um, as well. And yeah, it was lovely there as well. It was definitely more kid orientated there because they had massive swimming pool, massive play area. Um, whereas B&B doesn't have quite that many things um, there for kids to just do in the evenings. But if you're in Disney, you know, mostly you're going to be knackered anyway. So just go to bed. It's a place to sleep, which is how I think of it. With my annual pass now, I do tend to stay at the partner hotels because they also have a free shuttle which runs between them over to the parks. Um, the shuttle runs every 12 minutes, I believe it is, and it's the one bus services all five of the partner hotels. So there's B&B, Explorers, Magic Circus, uh, Dream Castle and Camp Neville. Um, so they're all literally in a row if you see any of those on booking.com those are the ones what have free service to um shuttle service to the parks you could walk it it will take you about 20 minutes you can also drive it as well if you put a ho holiday package you will get your free um parking on site because your part um it's part of your ticket cost um but like i said the shuttle is just so much easier Getting to the park on, from the partner hotels, like going, is a lot quieter and a lot easier um, because obviously people go at different times. Whereas when you're coming back, they're obviously they're normally a lot busier because everyone would just wants to get back to the hotel. And like I said, yeah, those hotels are really good as well. You can get them at good prices. Booking.com often has them around, sometimes between seventy and hundred pound a uh, room per night. Um, which is a good deal. I often, when I book it, I will get a part. I will get a reservation on Booking.com because I can pay when I arrive, or I can pay up to a couple of days before, which is a really good option. But then I also go and look on Trivago and see if they've got the same hotels at a cheap price. But then, obviously, when I'm over on Trivago, it is an upfront payment. So if you want to book like package holidays and stuff, that is fine. If you want to take all the hassle out of doing everything yourself, um, like I said, the three companies I mentioned earlier are all great places to go and look for these. They can often be a little bit more expensive. I would recommend if you're switching between the three um, different sites, um, clear your whole history on your phone uh, because that sometimes racks the price up because it's as if like it knows that you're looking at that price as i said before about my annual pass i would say if you're planning on doing a four day trip uh, the annual passes can work out a lot better um because they often pay for themselves after a four day trip or after a four day 
park ticket if you're booking your park ticket through an external company like attraction tickets and um, then it often works out cheaper to buy an annual pass so my annual pass um, is obviously the infinity one they haven't released the new prices yet for because they often hike the price up a little bit each year um but mine was 420 euros i believe at the time um so and obviously that's the top level annual pass sometimes the a four day part ticket is around like 300 pound um and obviously you can get lower level passes and it still gives you the exact same thing and then you can do like another trip without even having to pay for tickets um and you get all your discount on in your shops and your res disney owned restaurants which is another amazing thing um so yeah you can save so much by doing annual passes i 100 percent recommend them even, like i said even if you're just going on one four day trip get your annual pass it's a lot better if you are a family of five or more and um, you can get a group discount as long as you all have live at the same address and um, you can get a group discount as well and um, which is a really good option as well i believe it's around 10 percent off every annual pass um so yeah it's something else to do and um, and when you do that though i believe it has to be a posted one you have to do it online via the french website that is the only downside to them if you want to pick your annual pass online and um, which obviously at the moment you like at the moment they're not doing them but um yeah you would have to do that and um, you have to do it on a french website but if you use google chrome you can do a translate the page um thing which is obviously really good um you can buy annual passes at the parks obviously at the moment you're not able to and um, you're not allowed to buy any tickets at the parks um but you can buy your annual pass at the park and um, you can like or you can pay you can buy a one day ticket um to enter the park that day and then go oh, go to the annual pass office and ex uh, exchange or upgrade it to an annual pass which is another good option to be able to do um so yeah if you know you're considering doing that i work hard for my money to be able to go to disney uh i don't spend money on other things really i try and scrimp as much as possible um when i'm trying to save to go for a disney trip just because it's something i know i'm gonna enjoy and um, i love making the videos for you guys um and yeah i just can't wait to be and um, to get back to the park and enjoy the magic again and um, so if you have any questions about booking disneyland paris specifically like maybe to you or any tips what i can give you um then let me know um down in the comments you can um dm me over on instagram i always leave my link tree in the description box it has all of my links to all my social medias um so go and check them out and obviously my small business pages and stuff are on there too um so yeah go and check it out you can always dm me over on instagram i am more than happy to help people when potentially booking trips if it's a good price if you're wondering is it a good price you sit there and go what do you think about this price is it is it reasonable or do you think i can find a better deal obviously after disney's been closed for nearly for around what is it around seven six seven months nearly the prices for the next couple of years are going to be a lot higher than normal or if you have been before um around the same time it's probably going to be a little bit more expensive this time than it has been in the past so just be aware of that it's not you trying you not finding a good price it's the fact that disney have put their prices up slightly and there aren't going to be as many deals going on at the moment either but as i said i am always open to helping people whether you want to leave me a comment and um, down below to say that you've messaged me over on instagram or just don't message me directly on instagram always happy to help and um, so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did um make sure you hit the like button and um subscribe if you haven't done already because i'm doing a lot more of these disney sit down videos so thanks for watching bye